Welcome in to Virtue Field in Burlington, Vermont. It is a rainy, rainy Saturday evening. AC Connecticut are in town against Vermont Green FC. I'm Brian with Matt Montel. Matt, a must-win game again. You need three points against the team that comes in fifth in the division, middle of the table, AC Connecticut. Vermont Green coming off a good bounce-back performance against Boston. Three points in necessity again tonight, though. Yeah, to, to touch on your, your first point there, this is now kind of the we're, – we're past the halfway point. We're in the business end at this point. So now it's three points at minimum – or, uh, sorry, at maximum and one point at minimum no matter what. And, you know, you adjust how you play in these times. You take a little bit less liberties. You're maybe a little bit less adventurous. It might almost be a little bit boring at times because you're going to want to – to kind of keep that insurance of, say, like that one goal and it's the 75th minute, like those type of scenarios, it's going to be a little bit more defense first instead of trying to go for the second and the third for it. So, yeah, it's uh, it's is, uh, the business end now. We'll break down the entire Northeast Division standings throughout the course of our broadcast. We're going to talk starting 11. We're going to talk with head coach Adam Pfeiffer coming up on our pregame show. But for now, Matt, we need to start with Yaniv Bazin. Back at the top of the formation coming off the second ever hat trick in Vermont Green FC history. Oh, and by the way, it was in Yaniv Bazzini's club debut that he got it done against <laughs> Boston Bolts. What a player. He fits right in at the top of this formation. Yeah, absolutely. And no surprise that he's starting again. You know, we were talking, you just don't drop a player after a hat trick. And it was the, the style of the hat trick. It, there was almost no luck whatsoever in that hat trick. Maybe the header where it kind of bounced fortuitous in front of him for it. But the other two was absolutely all him. That was his movement. That was, you know, him being in the right place, those runs being, you know, incredibly well-timed and clinical, especially that, that second goal. The first goal and the second goal were incredibly clinical. And, you know, um, it's it's the the size and the style and the way of the striker that he is versus kind of the other options that we have as forwards. And it's just I think it fits just a little bit better in the 4-2-3-1. He's a little bit more imposing. He's taller. He's a little bit more well-rounded than DK. Um, Nacho brings something a little bit different. He's a little bit more fire. He, you know, He's very good at pressing. He's got a lot of pace for it. You know, he's very good, like, in and around the box and maybe, like, driving in from wide and trying to get those shots for it. But when you're really just trying to make find somebody on the end of the crosses for there, I feel like Bazzini is kind of, like, the, the best option for that. The last time it was rainy here in Burlington for a Vermont Green game, they lost one to nothing against Western Massachusetts. The group with Bazzini that's going to be tasked with finding goals tonight, that layer of three attacking midfielders, Felipe Diagostino, Bilal Kamal, and Zach Zengi earn the starts tonight. What can we expect from that trio? Yeah, uh, like we were discussing earlier, it's it's not exactly like a, a f um, an attacking midfield that is has like a lot of pace. I, I know we've seen Zengi kind of drive with the ball from deep. I remember actually last match kind of impressed at how he was able to dribble at pace and nobody could really get within five feet of him. And Maybe that's, you know, just his quality for it. But outside of that, nobody's kind of, when you think of like Messer, like a speed demon, somebody who just like bombs down, the, you know, the wings for it. They're more clinical, technical players, incredibly good on the ball. They love like these little intricate passes. They're going to be there to find these little one-twos to try to unlock the defense. And I, I can see, you know, Diagostini, Zengi, and Kamal, their role is going to be very much now with Bazzini is trying to provide him as many chances as possible or working with him to, you know, get some shots off on goal for it. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting how it all kind of plays out with – because I don't think we've actually seen those three behind a forward play together, and they're all so similar that I'm hoping that, you know, there's enough um, understanding, you know, like whose role is what within, you know, those three. And then one final partnership we wanted to touch on. Musa Ndiaye and Nate Jones, a big duo. Starting mm -hmm. once again at center back for the second consecutive game together. Feels like that's a partnership that's really starting to come together. I don't think I saw NDA lose one single uh, header ball, like the, the clearance. So it was, you know, from the, from the goalkeeper, he had the perfect positioning, very much like Ashford always did uh, when he was playing at center back. And that's just something that you can't overlook, like when you're winning the first ball all the time instead of, you know, the, the forward that he's marking is being able to drop it off into the midfield. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, 4v3, 4v4, whatever. Um, but, yeah, him and Jones I was really impressed with uh, on Wednesday. I think they both – I think Jones is a little bit more kind of a, a Cadillac. Like he's, he's big, he's, he's strong, he's good in the air as well. And DA's got like a little bit more tenacity kind of in his movement and the way that he tackles. 
Um, I personally wouldn't want to be having DA marking me because I feel like my ankles would absolutely feel it. So uh, I'd be flat on my back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I no surprise with them starting, you know, again together. I think they're probably actually the strongest partnership that we're seeing out of this, uh, this season so far. We've got loads more to come on the pregame show. Coming up just after this, my sit down with head coach Adam Pfeiffer. Welcome back to the pregame show. I'm now joined by head coach of Vermont Green FC, Adam Pfeiffer. Coach, it's a rainy one out there. We're in the press box. You can see it coming down behind us. How are you as uh, we get set for today's matchup with AC Connecticut? Yeah, we're doing well. Just hoping that it uh, kind of dissipates a little bit by 7 o'clock. So we'll see what happens. Counting down the minutes for tonight's matchup. Your guys had a good bounce back performance last time out. Following the loss to Western Massachusetts, you come away with a 3 to nothing win over Boston Bolts. What did you like about the performance as you were able to come away with three points at home? Yeah, I mean, of course, anytime you get an early goal, it helps quite a bit. Um, you know, we've done that a few times this year, so, you know, that, that, that eased kind of the tension a little. Um, it's a really hot day. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, both teams, we have players <laughs> out working camps and stuff like that out in the sun all day. And so I think it did, you know, affect the game, um, at least from our standpoint. But, but you know, watching it back, uh, it, f it felt like we actually played pretty well. You know, we, we walked away feeling like it was probably our worst performance of the year and then watched it back and like, ah, you know, we, we were all right. So, um, so yeah, we're pleased with that. And then obviously, you know, having Yaniv score three was, was big for us. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, having that guy up there, uh, and with that had just great movement for us and, um, he was making a lot of runs in behind, and, you know, obviously he can come, you know, deeper into the field and, and, and connect with the midfield as well. So he, he, he showed a lot, and we were happy to get him out in the group. Matt and I talked about it a little bit during the broadcast. How does Yaniv and his skill set differ from your other options at that striker spot, and how was he able to affect the game, like you said, with those runs and getting on the ball in possession? Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he's obviously a really experienced player. Um, you know, he, he had a great season this year uh, at UVM, plays a slightly different role mm -hmm. um, for UVM, um, where for us he's kind of the, the – he'll be more of like the focal point um, – in our attacking so um you know he's got really good speed he's got very good ideas um his movement's very good obviously you know the first goal um getting across the goalkeeper getting across that defender and 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 beating him to the f that that first cross that came in so all that stuff is good um now you know can we do it back to back ac connecticut a team that have one game all year that was separated by more than one goal they've played in a lot of tight contests with the weather the rain tonight if it is a tight one what is the message to the guys knowing that this is a team that have played a lot of groups, a lot of teams in your group really close? Yeah, I mean, they, they have. Um, you know, they've had, they've had a bunch of tight games. They had Western Mass on the ropes for a little bit. Um, you know, for us, it's, it's really, you know, we're, we're worried about ourselves. We're not, you know, putting too much, um, you know, concern in, in, into any opposition. And, and, of course, like we have a ton of respect for them, a ton of respect for all the teams we play, but, but we can really only control what we can control. And, so that's the message going into this one is, is you know, to do the things that have gotten us, you know, to, to six wins so far this year and, um, you know, try to control the tempo and the ball and, and uh, you know, see where it leaves us uh, after 90 minutes. Looking at your overall lineup, all of a sudden it feels like you've got height all over the pitch. Nate Jones in the back line, Musa and DA, Jake Ashford both big in the air, and you add Yaniv in up top. It just feels like there are lots of guys who can win that ball in the air. Scoring on set pieces, could that follow suit? Is that something you guys have been working on? I know it feels like you're targeting big Nate Jones a lot from these corners. Yeah, I mean, Nate obviously, you know, is, is pretty unique with his size and athleticism. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there aren't a lot of players around that have that kind of leaping and, and size. But, so, yeah, I mean, we, you know, we, we certainly are trying to use that strength, you know, when, when we have those opportunities. But we also have other guys that, yeah. that are going to be dangerous in those situations as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's something that we've, we've put a little bit more emphasis on, but at the end of the day, we're very, um, very much a sort of a controlled team and, and, you know, that, that is why the ball's on the ground a lot. So, 
Um, you know, we don't put too much stock into the size of the players we bring in. We just want good footballers. But, yeah, we do have, uh, you know, a group of guys um, in sort of good spots to, to have that kind of size. So, you know, it's a sort of added benefit. We have seen your group control the game on the ground often this year. What's the next step for you all as a team to take another step forward with your ability to control the pace yeah. of play and control the ball? Yeah, I think it's just, you know, being smarter when, when we do give the ball away and, and breaking up counterattacks. And then, um, you know, sort of our movement in the last third has kind of been, you know, something that, that, that we've talked about quite a bit recently. And, and uh, you know, that was better uh, in the Bolts game um, than it had been at other points in the season. So, yeah, I mean, still a work in progress, but, uh, you know, we've got a lot of really good players, so it makes it makes it easier. Coach, I appreciate the time. Good luck today. All right, thank you. And coming to you live from Virtue Field in Burlington on a rainy night, AC Connecticut in town against Vermont Green FC. Brian McLaughlin and Matt Montel back with you, getting you set for kickoff. AC Connecticut comes in with a 3-2-3 and record. With 12 points, they are in fifth place, smack dab in the middle of the table. A win would put Vermont Green at the top of the table. Let's run through the AC Connecticut starting 11. Luca Marinelli, their starting keeper. Formation set up, sent to us as a 3-4-3. The back three, Dwayne Marshall, Demario Cameron, and Gustavo Medina. Then the midfield four, Jalen Jean on the left-hand side. Sergio Sanchez, who starred at post, is in the middle with Ben Tomas, who plays for Salve Regina. Christian Amaro, the AIC yellow jacket on the right. Then up top, the team's leading scorer, Daniel Istanbuli, Nathan Bennett in the middle, and Sergio Diaz on the right. That's Nathan Schnur. Let's meet the starting 11 for Vermont Green. Matt, a familiar formation. Some slight, slight tweaks to this 11. Yeah, I'm going to be interested to see, actually, uh, Threadgold. I haven't gotten to get a chance to watch him play, and, uh, you know, from what we hear, he's a very tenacious player. He's a little bit of a smaller build, so, you know, low center of gravity. I'm expecting him to kind of just be an absolute uh, problem on that left side, but it'll be interesting to see him. And then, uh, yeah, Zengi, Kamal, and uh, Diagostini, you know, trying to provide for Bazzini. Underway from Virtue Field. Three massive points on the line. This is into the home stretch, the type and part of the season that you called, you got to handle your business. This is the time of year where if Vermont Green wins out, they win the division. That's simple. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, are they going to start with like a lot of intensity, you know, and, and try to get maybe an early goal, catch, you know, essentially AC Connecticut while they're trying to get warmed up into the match, or are they going to kind of have more of a controlled, maybe measured approach and kind of feel the game out just a little bit in the beginning, so. There's Bilal Kamal on the right-hand side and Bazzini offside on that ball through. The flag up on Bazzini early. The Israeli international and Vermont Catamount Bazzini, who scored a hat trick in his Vermont Green FC debut on Wednesday against the Boston Bolts. And right away we see that was a really nice little run that he had just barely offsides. I almost thought that was actually onsides, and that's that's something that, you know, both myself and Coach and yourself had, have noticed that he makes these darting little runs when he sees the wide players or, you know, the center mid uh, below him, you know, Zengi. He finds those little pockets for it. He's looking for it right now. There he is on the run. The referee saying he's onside on the deep ball from Ashford. And the green work it backwards through Zengi to Rodri Ferreira. And here's the new man on the left-hand side, Gabe Threadgold, a Washington Husky. He flips it for Zengi. But the flag is up on Zengi from look. the far side. It's a good idea, though. It's a, it's a really good little run from Zengi, and I like that Threadgold had that you know little idea, that little kind of curling right foot pass just to lead him. Threadgold, as I said, the Washington Husky, where, of course, he was teammates with Nate Jones. This fall for Washington, four assists for Threadgold. He's filling in at that left-hand back spot, which has moved Jake Ashford over to the right-handed outside back. Luca Marinelli gets it back in play, the keeper for the Bryant Bulldogs. Of good course, Nate Jones him. wins it. Yeah, I was going to say, good win from Jones. Felipe Diagostini, the Brazilian who's headed to Syracuse in the fall. He got it tackled away by Dwayne Marshall. And that's Marshall, who tried to thump it up the sideline, but ran out of room for a green throw. And I like right away seeing Threadgold. He's actually been playing near the halfway line and then a little bit further up. So he's a little more advanced than what we saw maybe like, you know, Ashford had in the, in the last week, at least to start the match.
an AC Connecticut crew that have played in tight games all season. Both these sides have played eight of their 14 regular season matches so far. Seven of the eight matches for AC Connecticut have been separated by one goal or less. Ashford into the path of Kamal. He tracks it down with Gustavo Medina, Gustavo Medina in front. A good tackle from Medina and back for Connecticut. There's the striker, Nathan Bennett. Drops it for Ben Tomas. And on the right-hand wing, Christian Amaro. Here's a look at the back three that AC Connecticut employed tonight. Demario Cameron, the anchor in the middle with Medina on his left-hand side. Marshall manning the right. Pereira pounces. Diagostini skips around a challenge. Ball seems to be bouncing, ar uh, bouncing around a lot right now. Just noticing that it's difficult to kind of just keep this a little bit on the ground. Maybe just, you know, a little bit of the conditions, just the, the pace of the play for it. Light rain coming down and expected to come down throughout tonight. It's going to be possession for AC Connecticut on the drop ball. Matt, I talked with Coach Pfeiffer in our pregame interview about how he wants his team to play with the ball on the ground. That's how he feels they're at their best. How could these conditions make that difficult? We talked about it in the Western Mass game, the only game where Vermont Green have not scored this summer, and it was quite rainy that night. It's difficult sometimes because if you try to play a low driven ball when it's like really wet, if it's been raining a lot, then it slows down a little too much, like it catches the water. And then if you try to play kind of those balls, like those long balls in the air for it, it can actually skip and then it leads like way too much that you want it to sit in front of, say, like one of the forwards. So it's going to be difficult, like, but that's really what the first 10 minutes is. You're getting acclimated to the conditions, how the field's playing, and then you start to adjust your weight of your pass. Thread goals. His pass errant, looking for Bazzini. It was tackled by Cameron, out of play, and the Green will have another throw in. Some changes in the lineup after just a couple of days off between matches for the Green. Dylan Lane and Giorgio Probo, as well as Benny Prego, both all three earning rests tonight, although Probo is available off the bench. There's Bazzini on the press, but it finds the palms of Marinelli. Well, Vermont Green struck quickly against the Bolts in the midweek clash. Bazzini scoring two and a half minutes in. Amaro. What do you think of the Pink Sox, Matt? It's a new look for the Green. I think you know how I feel about Pink Sox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they Not my color, that's all. They started to warm up, and Matt's <laughs> first question was, are they going to keep those on for the game? <laughs> it's, not, it's not my color. Oh, little Aaron pass from Jones there. There's some of that. Maybe, could, could water have affected mm -hmm. that? Yeah, just a little bit. A throw in on the left for Jalen John. A forward from Southern Connecticut State. Scored a couple of times in the fall. He's yet to find the back of the net for AC Connecticut. Zangi pounces, and here he is on the charge. That's well read by Demario Cameron. I thought Diagostini was a little. A shot from distance, oh. and what a strike. AC Connecticut jumps in front. A smash from Daniel Istanbuli. And absolutely out of nowhere. I think it caught everybody off, off guard. It was an absolutely thunderous strike, but I don't think anybody actually expected that to, to happen for it. And I think even Schnur was just kind of frozen to his spot. It's a, it's a perfect shot into the corner. From distance, the AC Connecticut leading goal scorer has his fourth of the year. Just finished up playing high school at South Kent High School in Connecticut. Istanbuli, a laser. And now Vermont Green in an unfamiliar spot, Matt. They're playing from behind against the team that they are comfortably ahead of in the table and a team that on paper they should handle. This is unfamiliar for them at home. I think, you know, that type of goal, though, when 
it's one thing to get absolutely worked and to have you know this spell of possession when when you're out of uh, when you're out of possession and to have you know say AC Connecticut absolutely work the ball and then score a tap in and you just can't seem to get to it. But when somebody scores an absolute screamer like that, you kind of just have to raise your hand and be like, "That's a that's a fantastic strike, man." Okay, l- let's go. Fantastic to say the least. AC Connecticut jumps out in front. Of course, they are right in the middle of the table on the outside of any playoff picture looking in after yesterday's Seacoast United and Western Mass game in which the Phantoms beat the Pioneers 2-1. to one, They went top of the table with 19 points, even in matches played with the green. Both Seacoast and Vermont a match in hand against Western Mass and Vermont and the Pioneers even on points. So a victory tonight would put the green to the top of the table. But they will have to find a handful of goals if they want to earn the three points at home. Listen, you want it to happen at this point in the match, though. If that happens at the 80th minute, that just completely takes the, the wind out of your sails. So there's there's plenty of time to get collected and keep doing what you were doing. I, I thought, you know, Vermont has started the match well and just just need to keep going. Reeled in by Diagostini. Thread Gold has roamed in front of him. Diagostini pops it for Zangi. Zangi tries to scissor his way around Amaro, who plays at the Division II level with the AIC Yellow Jackets. And the back line combo of Jones and Ndia switch it for Ashford. Wearing the captain's armband. Bazzini has shifted out wide, tackled out of play by Jean. Daniel Pacella. Connecticut have a, a really good shape to their defense right now. It's something that I've just kind of noticed. When they're off the ball, they sit in these two kind of lines, these two banks, as you would call it, and it's very difficult to break down, especially playing it on the ground. Cameron cuts out the Ashford cross. The green captain finds Kamal. Balal Kamal rocking a ponytail tonight. It's out of play, and the green have earned their first corner into the 11th minute. Yes, I, I thought that he was going to point, you know, for that for a goal kick, but the center ref took over and said that that's a corner. Zangi will try over to take it. Jones, Ndia, and Ashford entering the box. It's a massive back line that have real size advantages for the green. Zangi looking for Jones at the back post. It's Marinelli who does well to stab it out with his right palm for another corner. I like that out of the goalkeeper, though. It's somebody who absolutely takes charge. He doesn't, you know, he's not relying necessarily on the center back to do uh, to win the ball. He's like, no, I can go out and get it and get this out of danger. Only the second start this year for Marinelli. He's come off the bench three times. Connecticut will rotate their goalies often at halftime, making the change. Zengi again looking for Jones. Jones wins the first ball. Ashford makes a poke towards it and commits a foul in the process. Something we're noticing right away is there, it seemed to be going for Jones, and there was actually a goal that led from that. It was, I believe, uh, Bazzini's second goal was driven to that back post both times trying to find Jones, and Jones uh, heading it back into a dangerous area. It's almost Jones providing service with the second half. Yeah, exactly. Might find himself with a couple assists this season from that. He notched one assist in the fall for Washington. I would have to guess it was from something similar. There he is, nodding it down for Yaniv Bazzini. Kamal racing with a few of the Connecticut defenders. He beats Medina to it. And possession for Ashford. Zangia teasing run to the end line. And again, covered by Cameron. Thread Golds, Amaro in front of him. Thread Gold, given some room. He and Diagostini's first time playing together. Well done by Ashford. He has an early ball looking for Bazzini, and it's clawed in by Marinelli. It's well worked, you know, back and forth from side to side and then looking for that opening, and that's where Bazzini is kind of just floating behind the center back. Like, that's... 
lurking, as you would say, and that's exactly it. You know, it's like keep it pivoting, and then those little pockets of space for Bazzini to dart in and possibly get his head on. That's a, you know, keep doing that. And here's the goal score, Istanbuli. A solid strike that Schnur had to be sharp on. The green keeper with a strong save, and Diagostini fouled. Danger from Daniel Istanbuli again, though. Diagostini, he's motoring his way into the attacking end, but Cameron stands his ground. The big center back, Demario Cameron. He's been impressive so far, anchoring the back trio. Couple little alarm bells, though, from when AC Connecticut get the ball forward. You know, they so far you've had, you know, the absolute screamer. You've had one breakaway, and then you've had one where it results in a shot. Ashford timed his run. Ashford tried to slot it across. Took a deflection, and it will be a goal kick, I believe, off of Ashford last. Yeah, it looked like it bounced off uh, Ashford right after he struck it. A really good rush forward from the green. Danger both ways. Bazzini having words with our head official. That's as dangerous as we've seen Ashford look, though, on a rampage down the right. Yeah, it's it's nice to see that, you know, him playing as a center back, he's got it in his locker, though, when he's playing out as a, a right back or a left back that he wants to get forward. And I think pushing him out on the right, he has his more preferred foot, obviously, his right foot for when he gets into those spaces and actually can provide the service with. We saw him checking in on his right foot a lot on Wednesday because he's not as comfortable with his left foot. Playing slightly out of position, a natural center back, although he'll tell you he was born a number nine. <laughs> I'm not sure how serious he'll tell you that, but he will say it. Diagostini asking for Threadgold to open his legs. Threadgold gets the ball across. Pazzini dives in. Diagostini evens the score. Felipe Diagostini, a wonderful right-footed finish. Absolutely fantastic answer, too. To, you saw, you know, they, they shook off that, that absolute wonder goal from AC Connecticut, and they kept doing what they started the match doing keeping possession, rocking the ball back and forth, opening up these little pockets. The ball was kind of moving right before the cross, and I thought there might have been a foul, and we'll take another look at this right here. I thought it might just have a little too much pace on it. Credit to wow. get him forward for it. That's thread gold. Here we see it go down, but what a finish from Diagostini. One time with the right foot into side netting. That's the type of response that we were looking for. Exactly. Felipe Diagostini, the Brazilian who's headed to Syracuse in the fall, opens his Vermont Green account. Had an assist to his name. Now he's got a goal as well. And I was about to ask him that. Look, we saw Western Mass score early against Vermont Green. Then they were able to pack it in defensively, suffocate the game, came out with a one to nothing win on the road. I thought it looked like AC Connecticut was doing the same thing early. How are the Green able to unlock a defense that looked like you had noticed early, really organized shape in the back? Well, yeah, it's it's literally it's it's what I'm saying is that they're they're pivoting the ball left to right very quickly in almost one to two passes at most. And you know you're hearing Tom Proctor say like spraying the ball, and you're seeing Jones doing that, finding those wide players, whether it's you know Ashford or Threadgold, and then you're seeing Diagostini and uh, and Kamal start to check in a little bit. So there's all these space. The the center backs and the 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 back four have to squeeze in a little bit. So now there's space out wide, and then you start to see these chances open up. The flag stayed down on that Zangi run, but too much on the pass from Ashford looking for the ball over the top. There's space behind this back line for some of those runs for Zangi and Bazzini. That's going to be the hard one, though, is in when the uh, surface, especially turf like this, is this wet. Like, it skips really, really fast after it makes contact with the ground. So trying to play those leading balls is going to be really difficult. There's Diagostini coming centrally. A great response from the team trying to go top of the table. Vermont Green FC, their third consecutive home game. They have not taken as many points as they would want this year in these home matches. A turnover from Zangi, but the ball bombed forward by Dwayne Marshall towards no one in particular, and the Green get it back. The technique on it, too, that's why I was a little surprised. It was like he absolutely smashed it. I was like, that wasn't going to sit. 
That for, looked uh, like a center back. <laughs> it wasn't going to sit for Diaz there, and I thought, was he trying to go for it again? For Schneer saw him off his line. Diagostini, a beautifully weighted ball for Kamal. Bilal Kamal, he's got it on his preferred left foot. He takes a rip. It had Mar Marinelli just ever so slightly eyeing it up on his line. Yeah, I thought maybe he was going to flick it on just for Bazzini because I saw Bazzini making the run, and he was going to beat his player. He was in front of him, but Kamal decided to, to cut in. Almost looks like he's going to pass it. And he's, he backs himself for that goal. You know, he backs himself for that shot, so I like it. That's Bilal Kamal's scoring kind of pocket. That's where he can really use that left foot. Unable to find Twine on that attempt. And now Bazzini, after the header one in the midfield, tackled a physical challenge from Marshall. It is a throw-in, though, for Vermont. Diagostini's got it on a string. Well done by Threadgold, just to break those lines. And now Zangi, he spots Ashford. Ashford, a one-time ball across. Cut out before Zangi could let loose a volley. But tracked down by Ndia and the green reset. You know, it's one thing that has really impressed me, you know, uh, last season and this season, and it's clearly something that the coaching staff do in the recruiting. They pick very technically sound players. They, they don't just necessarily go for the uh, – obnoxious you know saying of like american players are just athletes that also can play soccer a little bit he picks you know footballers well a lot of these guys are not american i mean maybe that has something well, to do there with you it. go <laughs> <laughs> well, i mean you look at the top line you have an american in zangi but bazzini from israel kamal from london diagostini from brazil you go to the back line and you have musa Ndia, who is originally from senegal ferreira in the midfield from portugal Daniel Pacella, a Canadian. There is a real international flair about this Vermont green side. There's no question. And that's nothing against American footballers. I just want to no, make, no. make that clear. No, absolutely. No, we're, we're not saying that. We just we we've had a bad habit, you know, in the in the past where we we breed athletes first and then you know teach them to play soccer, but. Certainly come a long way over the last couple decades. Here's a great American, Jake Ashford. Heels on the right hand end line. Bazzini dragging his center back wide. Bazzini's cross. Zangi across the face of goal. Got to look at it. He was marked by Cameron, and it looks like Cameron actually got the defensive challenge on it last. It's a corner. Really good cross, though. Really dangerous to deal with, and that takes a last-ditch defending from Cameron there. It's Bazzini who gets this crossing. And that's him making those diagonal runs in there, not just staying within the 18. He's making the runs to, to create the play. Zangi will cue up the Green's third corner. He plays it short with Kamal. Zangi takes a rip. A teasing ball, asking for somebody to get a touch on it. Uh, I wanted Ashford just to go on there. I think Ashford thought that that was going in, but you don't, you don't just bank that it's going to go on. Go ahead and just crash the net. Bazzini loves that service. He was lurking in the area as well. All of a sudden, an onslaught on Luca Marinelli's goal. Yep, just turning up the dial now, you know, keeping, uh, keeping that possession, but then adding in those shots on goal. And the Green win another ball in the air. It's Daniel Pacella to rise up and win it. A note of surprise in my voice because we've been so accustomed to seeing Ndia be the mm -hmm. one who goes and wins that ball. I don't often think of Pacella as an aerial threat. But the Green get it back under control off of the Pacella initial ball one. Jones trying to connect with his Husky teammate. Threadgold gets on it. Threadgold's cross to Zanke, and the Green take the lead. Wonderfully worked. Threadgold the assist, and Zanke has his third in the Green. And there you see they're finding the way to the pass. You know, they, they saw how fast it was moving. That was just a little bit of a lighter touch. 
sits up. Oh, great, great pass from Jones here. Just the little backspin. Sits just enough for Threadgold. I love how much Threadgold is getting forward. And Zengi in the perfect place. Right place, right time. Good finish. An ear-to-ear -ear grin for Zach Zangi. It had been a bit of a drought for Zangi on the score sheet, but he applauds the brave fans here in attendance. Again, it's thread gold. That ball across, perfection. Is that technically two assists for thread gold? Did, I would, was he for the first? I can't remember. I think it might be Bazzini's assist on the first. Thread gold got to the end he, line, yes, cut it right. back, got it, and Bazzini then stabbed it to Diagostini. I thought that Bazzini had gotten fouled and the defender had uh, deflected off, but either way, either it, it's way. thread gold getting forward and creating all of this danger. I'm, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. And it was the two Huskies, Jones, who found his collegiate teammate thread gold. That was a connection we were excited to watch those two on the left-hand side of the back line. A great response, the green, after giving up an early stunner from Daniel Istanbuli. Got a big time save from Nathan Schnur to keep it a one goal game and since then have turned on the Jets. You know, sometimes maybe, I, I don't have the data to back up this statement, but you score a screamer really early in a match and you get a little too confident or a little too comfortable about it and you kind of rest on that and you think, all right, there'll be another 30 minutes without a goal and then we'll find the second one for it. It's like, no, you got to go and get the second one as fast as you can. AC Connecticut, to their credit, have only allowed more than one goal one other time this year. It was a 2-1 to one loss to Western Mass. So this is a defense that have been quite stingy. consistent, stingy. Yeah, they've been really solid, the strength of this team throughout their season. Well, I've been impressed by actually Cameron and Marshall just off of, like, how physical they are. Like, they, they absolutely don't shy away from the tackle. They've had pretty good positioning. But those, you know, those two goals that we saw coming down from that width, that's really difficult for uh, especially, like, a back three to defend if you don't have your wide players, your midfielders. So it's uh, Gene and Amari or Amaro uh, not tracking back necessarily in time to actually stop that service. Diagostini again gets the feed from Jones. He's dancing. Thread gold back for Diagostini. That duo giving Connecticut all sorts of headaches. Diagostini making a miss. There's a challenge from Marshall that he could not clear. Well done by Threadgold there. But, yeah, to reiterate what you just pointed out, this little relationship that we're seeing between Diagostini and Ferreira and Threadgold, they're forming this little triangle on the left side and both all just kind of interchanging with each other on these passes and these runs and getting forward. Sergio Sanchez knocks it off of Threadgold. Sanchez, the teammate of Sergio Diaz Rincon, who plays along the top line for Connecticut, both of them played at post. Both of them just wrapped up their collegiate careers. Got a little bit of the bottom of, uh, I think, uh, Pereira's boot there. There's Sanchez trying to shake it off. Those stink, man. When you really swing through it and you catch the bottom, especially the heel, ooh. I do like these Connecticut uh, white kids. They're very clean. I like the texture. Oh. Almost a poor free kick taken. It does reach the boots of Diaz Rincon. Eventually brought down by Bennett. He slides it for the right wing back, Amaro. Diaz Rincon back for Amaro. He's got some room. Can get a cross away. A looping ball that Schnur backpedals and tracks down. And surprisingly, not any pressure anybody attacking that ball from Connecticut. You know, it's actually it's a half decent chance, and the goalkeeper's backpedaling for it. So if you get up on that, you might actually win that without fouling. Kamal had it tackled off of him by Medina. Back for Jones.
He takes three steps and he covers 20 feet. Those legs are so <laughs> long, man. Ashford gliding in. Ashford looking for an early cross. He got that one slightly wrong. A bouncing ball that he sprayed over the net. It's been a tough start for Marinelli. He's seen a lot of action right in front of him. There's Ashford. He's found himself into some attacking positions at right back. Well, it seems that also there's – I'm seeing um, – it looks like uh, Jean, John, Jean? I was going with Jalen John. But J Jalen John. It seems like Jalen John and uh, Istanbuli are – like they're having words about actually like – tracking back and i think uh john is asking istanbul he's like you have to come and help because i'm trying to actually track inside a bit of a loose touch from zangi now zangi almost had a brace gets his foot just a little bit around that a little bit more and that's going in the top corner diagostini set it up for him and zangi not off by much. That is a quality strike. He can see it on his face. He knew he was close to having his <laughs> second. You know, I wonder if I'll get to, to watch him play if I go back down home to D.C. and check out a Georgetown game. Should absolutely check out a Hoya absolutely. game. See if you can get them when Creighton comes to town. Okay. I'll take a look at the schedule. That's the Big East matchup to watch. Patiently worked to the back line. And there's that big switch of play that Jones has that technique to, that he's able to do. Same with uh, NDA, but oh. seems to be seeing Jones doing a good touch. Ashford for Bazzini. The it's flag up. is up. Bazzini thought he'd had his fourth in two games. He can't believe it on the ball from Ashford. It looked like a Bazzini tap in. No VAR? No VAR. I do think he was just uh, about two or three feet off sides. If we take another look, maybe I'm wrong, but it looked I mean, like he had just. This is an awesome combo right here, yeah, first of all. That touch right there, and then this touch from Ashford, so he can actually keep his pace going moving forward. Yeah, it looks like Bazzini is oh. off by about three feet. I think he might be as well. It is Good finish. awfully tight. Good finish, though. Bazzini continues to look prolific. And I like seeing that this is these chances are getting created from both sides, so it's not too heavily leaned on one side. And he's offside again. Launches that ball to the track facility. That's what we call playing with fire, though, when you play that offside's trap a little bit. And we know Bazzini's willing to be Testing that, making Absolutely. that run, trying yeah, to it's, time it. It's going to be on it at some point. Amaro has a miscue. Diagostini with numbers with him. He looks for Bazzini. Bazzini's got numbers in the middle. He drags Cameron wide. Bazzini's cross a deep one. Kamal has Ashford joining the pack. He'll put it in the path of his captain. Now Ashford can put it in the mixer. A deep ball towards Diagostini. He nods it down. Zangi's left-footed strike blocked. It's a corner. And you can see uh, Jean, the, the left-sided midfielder, is having a really, really tough time now trying to mark the, the, the correct player. He's not getting enough help from Istanbul or Marshall. You know, if, if you're going to have three at the back, either they are going to have to shift to the left or the right very, very quickly as a shape, or Istanbul is going to have to track back a lot, so Jean acts as a left back and makes it like a back four. Again, Zangi's ball a deep one. That's even too tall for Jones. A foul was spotted going against the green in the box. Yeah, I'm with you. Both sides of those outside spots, it feels like the green have just 
overloaded each side, and they have more numbers out there. Well, yeah, it's it's coming from Kamal and Diagostini uh, starting to actually take space inside, and then you're starting to see Ashford or Threadgold start to get forward. And if you're not very organized, as in AC Connecticut's uh, instance right now, Jean and Amaro are struggling to actually understand, like, all right, do I track back and I join in the defense a little bit? You know, is it just my uh, my job to do this? Yeah. Or is it Istanbul comes in, acts as a midfielder, Jean drops in? It, it's That's all about, you know, basically the system and how you communicate. Ashford also is just on one up that side right now. He slides it for Kamal, but a thundering challenge from Cameron knocks the green number 10 to the turf. Ashford is just finding all sorts of space in that right-handed wing. Yeah, it's it, both sides are just kind of trading these periods of time where they're getting forward and, and creating these attacking opportunities. Diagostini. It's almost like they're afraid to dive in on a challenge because they know he can do whatever he wants with it. <laughs> yeah. Thread gold. He angles into the central portion. Pacella was closed down by the AC Connecticut goal score in Istanbul. A little faint of the, the shoulder. I like that. Right under pressure. He's good under pressure. That's one of Pacella's strengths. Yeah, I agree. Ferreira finds thread gold. And now Bazzini. He wants to attack the wing back. Bazzini slides it across with the left. And the green have another corner. And I think I can see, you see Marshall's body language and his head, his shoulders down. He's just getting annoyed. You know, it, it, you can see it across the whole back line that this just keeps happening and happening and happening. The third goal is coming. It is relentless at the moment for the green as they look to extend their lead. Zangi so often has tried to find the big body of Nate Jones. A low driver. Marinelli gets a punch. It ricochets off of Ashford and clear of the AC Connecticut defensive end. Bennett, somehow out of the pack, Ooh. speared by Ferreira. No. It's a free kick against the Portuguese international of the green midfields. I think it, maybe the goalkeeper thought it was a little too much fire in that tackle, and it was a little bit studs up since it was directly at him, but he did win all ball. Take another look at this. Yeah, it's it studs up. It, it Technically, as much as I'm old school, I think that's a perfectly fine tackle. It is what it is. That's what Rodri Ferreira is known for, though, those bone crunchers. Exactly. You're going to know he's in the building. Same with Musa and D.A. And it looks like there might be some, well, no, maybe it's just a free kick. I thought the referee was signaling to Ferreira for a moment. Diagostini doing whatever he wants. Puts Pacella under pressure, but he does well. And Jones, a lollipop into space for Ashford to track down. Apparently, Kamal could not keep that in play, and it's an AC Connecticut throw. But it, right there, I just watched John kind of see that ball hanging in the air. There was nobody marking, I believe, Kamal to his left, who was behind him about 10 feet. And he committed to this bouncing ball that he wasn't going to get to, the Ashford. And all Ashford had to do was just loop the ball over him. And it's kind of, he's in that, he's in that no man's zone yeah, where between. Istanbul should be the one putting the pressure on, uh, on Ashford there. And Jean should be tracking back and marking Kamal. Now, I'm not going to tell them uh, what to do. <laughs> don't at go halftime, to their halftime but, locker yeah, room. Please don't listen to this stream. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no in depth in game scouting reports. There is a real look of frustration about this AC Connecticut side right now. It just seems very disorganized. And even, you know, in possession or, like, out of possession, their whole shape, I can't tell necessarily if they want to be a counterattacking team or if they want to be a possession-based team. Pacella going quickly, but it's going to be – well, Bazzini does get on the end of it. That was impressive. And here's Nate Jones to the end line. Jones across over the top of Kamal. Ashford stepping to it. It was a good strike. Whistles had gone. Ref's not happy about it because I think that was two seconds after the whistle had gone. <laughs> Ashford just put his laces through it, though. Istanbuli, but his pass out in front of Amaro. 
And those have been the passes that when AC Connecticut do get the ball, they've been unable to connect. Zangi somehow able to lasso it in. And DA had to step to it. He did. Oh, How did nice he get that chip. back to Zangi? And now Kamal on the half turn. Amaro closed him down. Thread Gold won it back. Diagostini in a battle with Marshall. Earns the green throw. And you're seeing in DA and Jones having all the time in the world, you know, playing out of the back to, to pick these long balls. And there's just no pressure on them. Not, not enough pressure, at least. And that time, Ferreira's pass. Too much to handle for Ashford. He allows Jean to get on it. Medina. Diaz for Jean. Tackled by Ashford. That's out in front of Diaz and Ferreira calmly backwards. Bazzini's worked his way to the right sideline. Diagostini just couldn't bring it down with the chest. It was a good little run too. Beat his man. If he if he gets like a softer touch there, that's a shot on goal. Bennett for Istanbuli. He slings it towards Jean. This is as much possession as AC Connecticut have had towards the attacking third. Ball intended for Istanbuli. He goes after it. Tackled to the ground by Ndiaye. Claims for a potential penalty coming from the AC Connecticut side. They fall on deaf ears. I think that's just NDA's mindset like he he does not shy away from it and he and he commits to his tackles and if you're going to absolutely it does look like it is a foul looking on the replay but there was some contact no doubt well done by Diagostini he touches it into the path of Zangi thread gold has to reverse course And Zangi fouled. Got a bit loose with it, but upended by Cameron. Taking quickly. Diagostini muscling his way around Marshall. Marshall, a good challenge. It's a green throw. That's been a fun battle, the physical presence of Marshall and the tiptoeing agility of Diagostini. Yeah, he's got that low center of gravity, though, if you don't get the, the tackle right and he just gets that little deflection or that little bobble and he can go forward, then he's gone. Ashford working with Kamal. Ferreira. India. Pacella. To thread goals. Zangi. Pacella. India. This is one of those spells of possession where the green working from triangle to triangle. Is uh, Tomas 10? He's 14. Uh, Amaral. Uh, Amaral is 5. Diaz is number 10. Yeah, Diaz. I, I've been watching Diaz now for about two minutes, and the amount of time and space that Pacella have or Jones. Well read by Marinelli on the through ball. Zangi was again hunting his second. And he's he seems to be like this luxury player. Like if everyone's playing great, like maybe. That through ball intended for Bennett. Well read by Schnurr. 
maybe he provides, but I haven't seen him put any pressure whatsoever, even when they're out of possession. Like, there was just a moment there where the pass back to Pacella was on, and that's, you know, something that we've been seeing Vermont been doing, that they've been pivoting the ball left and right, left and right, creating these pockets and openings. And Diaz, you know, could snuff that out if he would mark Pacella or Ferreira. Diaz had an illustrious career at post, hails from Madrid. Tomas has his pass picked off by Kamal. And he'll use Bazzini. Zangi and Kamal rushing forward. Bazzini, an early ball. Zangi in on goal. Zangi closed down, but still scores. Big Z, Zach Zangi, a brace. <laughs> just literally, again, a ball just leading from deep. And they're, they're finding the weight. And it's dying down, and you see, it almost looks like it's going to get away from it. Take another look at this. This ball, this cross, and the keeper. <laughs> Marinelli knocks it off of Zangi. Keeper doesn't give just enough of his entire body to absolutely blow up both players. And that's what happens when you don't commit all the way to completely snuff it out. You know, get like make sure that everyone is limbs, you know, at that point. It should be if, if your keeper comes out. And then you see what happens. And how about Bazzini again drifting into a wide area, drawing the defense, and then crossing to a runner? Yeah, he, he's perfectly fine, you know, if he's not necessarily, like, the focal point. It was interesting because before I thought he was going to be very much that focal point, like everyone's going to provide for him. No, he's actually been turning into a provider in this match. The most goals that AC Connecticut have allowed this year, and they come in the opening 44 minutes tonight. After they struck first, we weren't sure how Vermont Green would respond to allowing an early goal. The Green have not won in this campaign when they allow any goals. Only one via the shutout. Well, tonight a chance to take all three points and go to the top of the Northeast Division with five matches to play in the regular season after this. Of course, still massive road matches loom against contenders Western Mass and Seacoast. But the Green putting together a statement of a response to Zach Zangi goals and a beautiful Felipe Diagostini finish. And I'm just noticing a lot of frustrated communication going around the AC Connecticut team from the back line. I'm seeing Diaz having a lot of words with the defenders. He wanted him to pass it back to the goalkeeper and keep, you know, switching the ball, trying to keep some more possession for it. But you know, you can see that there's just this disorganization in it, and it's obviously just bleeding through into these consistent, you know, onslaught of attacks. I don't know about you, Matt, but ever since that Nathan Schnur save to keep it a one nothing deficit for the Green, the Green have turned it on. That's some of the best soccer we've seen them play all year, I think. Yeah, absolutely. They, they're definitely feeling it right now. Come on. Again, in an attacking area. Kamal, a Maradona, Bilal Kamal dancing. He scissors, still Kamal, it's saved. What an individual effort that was from Kamal. It could be 4-1 uh, before halftime. We've played 45 complete minutes, but a corner kick upcoming. Look at this. And everyone just really scared to put in a, a hard tackle or, you know, just get a, stick a foot in for it. It's just... Yeah, just a little lazy there. You know, nobody wants to commit the foul and then all of a sudden turn it to 4-1 and Kamala dances around and finds the shot. A good save in the end. Now a chance for Jones. Nods it down, loose in the middle. Tomas attempts to clear, but screwballs it across the end line for another corner. And again, finding Jones's head is clearly something that they've been working on. He's not just tall. He rises above the pack. Yeah, he times his jump really, really well. I was never good at that. No. Zangi's, yeah, I, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a low to the ground type player. Zangi, that's well read by Marinelli. He claims it cleanly. Tried to break. Zangi intercepts. Quickly for Diagostini. And still time for the green. Diagostini and Marshall. There's that big challenge from Marshall where Diagostini lost him a bit, and it's a foul. And, I mean, I absolutely can't stand defending players like Agostini with all these quick little feet, these very technical, low, like low center of gravity players that they, you know, little feints of the shoulders, all of it. It's so difficult to time out your, your tackle just right, and it's exactly what happens. 
He takes a thumping here. Whoop. And I like it because Yagasini is not afraid to, like, take the foul or anything. He's like, no, I'm going to take you on. It's 1v1 in the, this, this area of the field. It's a little bit Jack Grealish-like. <laughs> yeah. He provides the ball across. That one, too much mustard on it. I'm and sure, that's halftime. I'm sure Diagostini is less annoying than Jack Grealish. I would hope so. <laughs> Three to one through the opening 45 minutes. AC Connecticut struck first in front of a sparse but brave crowd in the rain. Then three Vermont Green FC goals to follow. A brace from Zach Zangi. We'll step aside. Talk to you in just a few minutes with Vermont Green in front by a pair at halftime. Yeah, thanks for having us tonight. Uh, this is quite the scene in Burlington. We, uh, we traveled in from North Carolina, and we're here with Recover Brands. We've been a partner for Vermont Green since uh, the, the organization was founded. We're excited to share more about what we do. We actually have a, a table and tent set up uh, out in the concourse. You can come check out more. But basically, Recover is a sustainable apparel company. We've been around since 2010. And we specialize in making it making 100% recycled apparel that's also 100% recyclable. So that means at the end of every garment's life, we can actually take the take those shirts back and put it back into our supply chain to make more. Uh, we also focus on our hyperlocal supply chains. So everything that we make was uh, comes or is made within a 250 mile radius from recycling center to finished product. Uh, if you check out the merch tent, we've got a lot of t-shirts, sweatshirts, and different uh, apparel options available with uh, the Vermont Green logo. So be sure to stop by and pick up some new merch. Uh, for us, we've been a mission-driven company since we started 13 years ago, and that's to make the most environmentally friendly and socially responsible products possible and to educate and inspire people to live and work for a more sustainable tomorrow. And through that, we use our apparel as a vehicle to promote social and environmental responsibility, which is why Vermont Green is such a great partner, and we're excited to be here uh, celebrating you, with you guys here tonight. As we think about the environmental impact of our garments, we try to really measure the, not only the bottle diversion, but also water savings, energy savings, and carbon emissions. And we really take a holistic approach into how we make garments. Uh, we also offer fully customizable options. So if you're a small business owner, a school, university, organization, we do have a lot of custom options available. So be sure to stop by our tent to check out more. Uh, Ben's going to share some info about the impact that we've made with Vermont Green since we uh, started up over two years. And 
as you'll be able to tell from these stats, the, the numbers do add up, and it's the reason why we've got to make sustainable choices every day. Yeah, thank, thank you all. Just want to share some, uh, some cool stats, and like Bill said, please come by uh, the booth either at halftime or, or after the game. Um, uh, through our partnership since 2021, um, working with the Vermont Green folks, uh, with, with the merchandise that we've made uh, compared to conventional cotton t-shirt, uh, you all have diverted uh, 21,000 plastic bottles, uh, saved 81,000 kilowatts of energy, um, saved over 33,000 uh, pounds of carbon emissions, uh, and then also saved over 5 million gallons of water uh, through our manufacturing process. Um, so, so we, uh, we appreciate everyone. Thanks to the uh, Vermont Green folks for uh, having us out tonight. And uh, up the green. Give it up for Bill and Ben from Recover Brands. Sometimes, it's just the start of the journey that makes one follow closely behind. Sometimes, it just takes one for a couple to be in the distance. Sometimes, it just takes a couple with many more on their heels. Sometimes, well, sometimes it's showing people your passion and heart that makes the journey greater every second. It's a spirit of success and to fight for what you believe in. It's grueling seconds of training. Repeat again, one more time. Sometimes it is games that feel like they will never end. And sometimes it's games that you don't want to end. It's what you do after the three whistles. Sometimes it's becoming stewards of our green mountains and the lands that sit between our cleats, showing that this world won't last forever unless we cherish it like a goal in the 95th minute of the championship game. Other times, it's breaking the binds of social stigma, racial divides, and inclusion to change and expel the ugly mindsets of those who try and spoil our beautiful game. Sometimes the fight for change is harder than the toughest of defeats. But don't forget that in those moments, that's when it stops being sometimes. All the time, it's a team of players, a family of fans, a passion for a better future. It influences change in our community, in the world of football, and beyond. All the time, it's a community founded by many with the vision of one. Goal here is net zero. 
As the players come out of the halftime locker rooms, we've got 45 minutes to play at Virtue Field. Vermont Green FC in front of AC Connecticut. Brian McLaughlin and Matt Montel with you at halftime. We're going to take a look back at all four goals. But first, Matt, I mean, just after AC Connecticut scores early, it felt like Vermont Green really turned on the Jets as much as we've seen them flip a switch all season. Yeah, it shows a lot of confidence. They immediately kind of, they were like, all right, Wonder goal, great goal. That's not going to happen Cheers. often. We're going to keep doing business as usual. And you, you saw it. They immediately did. Let's look back at the AC Connecticut strike that gave them the lead as they looked to maybe steal one. I mean, that is touched. Yeah, that's, that's an absolute rocket. Daniel Istanbuli gave AC Connecticut the early advantage in the first half, but then Vermont Green, like we discussed, able to start slinging things and putting things together. And it was really down that left-hand side early with thread gold and eventually the goal scorer, Felipe Diagostini. And yeah, looking here, you know, we see Diagostini and Threadgold had a good little partnership in that first half. Commits to it. Ah, and you were right. Mazzini did get that touch. And it's an absolutely fantastic finish from Diagostini from there. And after that, Zach Zangi scores the next two. He was a part of a lot of things with Bilal Kamal. Jake Ashford was in the mix. And the second goal of the game for Vermont Green FC, a pretty beautiful one for Zangi on the finish. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, it's it's pretty evident from what we saw, the frustration from AC Connecticut, but taking a look at this right here, absolutely great ball from Jones. I love the way that he just undercuts, so just it sits in front of Threadgold here. Good one touch just to fire it in, and then a really, really good finish. It's actually a harder finish than it looks, you know. It's bouncing, it's up in the air. He's got to get that right. And then the last goal wasn't exactly the prettiest finish. Pretty build up, but Zangi had to muscle his final or his second goal of the night past the keeper, Luca Marinelli. Yeah, and it's, you know, what we're seeing from, from Vazzini is that he's not necessarily just the central striker that only floats around within the 18 or, you know, maybe drops in a little bit. He's getting out wide, he's making these runs, and he's, he's helping the entire team break that line into the attacking third and is in turn in providing for these uh, for this goal. There's a look at Vermont Green FC. Already one change spotted. Federico Tellez in that huddle, as is Giorgio Probo. So a few green changes coming out of the halftime locker room. It looks like Kamal and Zangi remain. So Ashford, D.A., Jones, and Threadgold, the back four. Adam Pfeiffer, Chris Taylor, and their staff making some tweaks. Kamal, Zangi, Tejas, the attacking three. Probo and Pacella working in the defensive midfield. And Neneve Bazzini, who picked up two first-half assists, going to be back up top as the number nine. So three goals and two assists in not even a complete two matches. It's yeah. pretty impressive. In 135 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> not too bad for Neneve Bazzini. Still waiting on AC Connecticut to even come out of the halftime locker room. We are awaiting on Connecticut. Matt, I, you and I made this point, though. It was something that Vermont Green could have struggled with after AC Connecticut scored. Not the best conditions tonight. They're playing from behind. The mentality of the team, it felt like they, they really responded well, not just with their play, but they quickly took over the game and looked like they had mentally prepared as if, okay, we're okay if we fall behind early tonight. Well, those two losses, the the one against Seacoast, where Seacoast buried three of their four chances, if I'm vaguely remembering, but it wasn't chance after chance after chance. They just literally, they took them and, and they buried them. But I didn't think, and also against Western Mass, there was the one error that led to the goal. And then after that, Western Mass sat back. They didn't necessarily play like a... a incredible brand of uh, football so to speak but I thought that Vermont Green FC could actually hang their hat you know end those matches with some frustration that they couldn't get the win or get a point out of it but that they did actually play well and they yeah. did actually consistently create chances it just didn't fall their way and they just couldn't seem to bury it into the back of the net so I think it's I think they have a lot of confidence in, in the way that they play I don't think that, you know, necessarily a, a screamer goal or even those errors. I'm noticing that there's this, uh, th this confidence and this character to this team that they will continue to play the way that they, they believe in playing, that they train in playing, and that they're not going to change it just because they go one nothing down in the first 10 minutes. The fans have sure enjoyed it. And how about these fans with us in attendance? Of course, we appreciate all of you who are following along with us on VermontGreenFC.com slash streaming. 
but I am impressed by the fans who made it out tonight. The rain has subsided a bit, but it has not been an easy night to come to a game and watch some soccer. Yeah, now it's uh, now it's just steamy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we were saying. I was like, maybe the ball's now actually sticking, though. Could be. There's at least one change for AC Connecticut. They have a change in goal. Clayton Nibs gets the second half start. This is something very familiar for Connecticut on the year. From what I have found going through their box scores, they've made the change in goal at halftime every game of the season so far. Four different keepers have, have appeared for them this year. Now Nibs, who's in net, has made the most starts. He's a big boy. Yeah, I was going to say, this guy benches. <laughs> so that's a <laughs> big, beefy goalkeeper there. Listed at six foot one, Clayton Nibs plays for Springfield College. His eighth appearance of the year in nine games, he's made six starts, and he's really making a real effort to go around and talk to everybody on the field as we get set to start half number two. I think, you know, seeing that then coming out late, I think there was some pretty – maybe strong words that were had at halftime. I noticed that there was a lot of disorganization um, like throughout the entire team. There was a lot of like, you could see that it was these the negative uh, communication that was going around. It was a lot of kind of finger pointing and wagging. And I think, you know, they, they all had to kind of come together and be like, all right, let's, let's regroup. We're down three, one. Let's try to get the next goal. See where this goes. There's the, AC Connecticut coach just making sure he gets all the changes confirmed. I'll let you know if I spot any more AC Connecticut changes for now. I'm not seeing any. The same back three of Marshall on the right, Cameron in the middle, Medina on the left. Well, how they're lining up, Matt, Tomas has moved up the field into the attacking three with Bennett and Istanbuli. And they've, I think, dropped Sergio Diaz to play with his former collegiate teammate, Sergio Sanchez, into that duo in the midfield. There's Diaz with Sanchez number eight next to it. Well, I am going to say that Diaz, from what I see, is going to need to up his work rate a lot more in the second half. AC Connecticut controls. It is their same back three. They keep with the same 10 in front of their goalie. But again, they make a change at halftime in net. Clayton Nibs now on. Received by the goal scorer, Istanbuli. Pacella chipping at his heels. But Istanbuli maintains possession with Medina. Sanchez back to Istanbuli. Chops it in the direction of Amaro. Shielded well by thread goals. I really, really liked that first half from Threadgold. I was really impressed. I didn't know a lot about him. I didn't really know necessarily what to expect. I had heard that he was a pretty tenacious player. He could get forward really well, but he has very much impressed me. He was a solid cog in the Washington Huskies season this fall. There's Threadgold on the stretch. <laughs> there he is. That's just showing off. <laughs> a little bit of now you see me, now you don't. Yeah, calm under pressure. And now a close look at the captain, Jake Ashford. Federico Tellez, his first time to march inside, and Bazzini just on his heels wasn't able to make the run Tellez looked for. Yeah, Bazzini, uh, you know, gave him a thumbs up. He's like, I know I needed to make that run right before you actually got that off. So Zangi and Kamal remain. Diagostini, after a very productive first half in which he scored his first goal for the green exits. Rodrigo Ferreira, the other man in green to have his night end after 45 minutes. Giorgio Probo getting a chance to partner with Daniel Pacella. There's Probo on the challenge, wins it for Kamal. And earns a throw. Probo, another one of those players that has that long, you know, 60, 70 meter ping on him. And he's gonna, you're gonna see him switch the field quite a lot, him and Pacella. I don't remember Maybe this is just because it's a recency thing, but I don't remember last year's team using that long switch of the field quite as much as this year's team has. No, maybe not as often. Oh. Bazzini leaves it for Kamal. Bilal Kamal has a strike, and it's a good save from Nibs. Really intelligent from Bazzini. He knew that he was offsides and, and leaves it. He, see, he knows the player is coming behind. I love it. The green continue to look dangerous. Bilal Kamal still on the hunt for his first USL2 goal in the green. 
somehow has not found the back of the net in league play across two seasons, despite consistently being one of the most dangerous men in the attack. Tomas clips it from Kamal, but Kamal wins it right back. He allows it to go out for a throw in. Sanchez, Medina, Jalen Ja, Good little controlled spell of possession from Connecticut. They're, they're trying to unlock that midfield a little bit, so they're swinging it from the back, left and right. Oh, a miscue from Nibs. Tejas pounces, looking for Bazzini, but Medina got in front. Diaz. He and Sanchez linking up. Again, those two so successful in their collegiate careers at post. Bennett shielding off Probo. Jean down the left-hand side for Bennett. And D.A. comes across. That ball off the chest of Istanbuli. And see right there, that's where Connecticut need to all push together, the entire team right there. You've got in D.A. and Jones right now kind of locked in a little bit in the back, and they're able to just kind of pass freely. That's when the whole team has to completely put the pressure on. Especially when you... No, you're, you're hunting a couple goals here. There's yeah, exactly. No sense in sitting back. You're, you're down 3-1 you know, right now. You absolutely have to go and put the pressure on. Tejas runs into a wall of Sanchez. But he presses and wins it back. Now Bazzini. Zangi was offsides. Flag up. Absolutely silly. I mean, it's silly to do something like that, too, at 3-1, especially sitting in front of your goal. You're, that's it. If, if Vermont wins the ball, that's going to – that should have pretty much almost just turned into a chance on goal. I'd be fuming. There have just been too many of those miscues from AC Connecticut against a quality side like Vermont Green. They've shown quality in moments. Obviously, the strike from Istanbul was electrifying to open the game. And the physical play from Sanchez to ward off Pacella. But overall, they've lacked some of that bite that they've shown in other road vi uh, road fixtures. They've been a really good road team. In three road games on the year coming into tonight, they've taken seven of nine total points. But it would take a massive comeback against one of the top teams in the league to salvage anything on the road in the rain tonight. I do think overall, though, I, I'll, I'll give them credit that they have actually started this match a lot better in possession. Second half, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we haven't seen, we did not see any spells of possession from them really at all after the opening 10 minutes in the first half. Sanchez had his back on the sideline and just sprayed one that was easily collected by Threadgold. And I'd be, I'd be really frustrated because that's a really, really difficult ball to hit from all the way on the, uh, the touchline over here. And, and to actually do that just like off a half kick for it. It's like keep the ball. You guys are doing a good job of having possession for it. Don't just give it away so cheaply. Kamal has trouble. Again, defended by Cameron. And Bennett on the chase, and D.A. has it covered. He's so composed back there. And it's Ashford's turn to look long. Nibs will retreat and cover. But you're still seeing, I'm noticing right there, I think it's Jean on the left. You're seeing Tellez has about 20 feet between Jean and I believe it is. Medina. Yeah, Medina. And, he, and if Vermont Green FC, we've seen them been able to ping that ball, that diagonal ball across. Pacella cuts it off. Bilal Kamal tries to drag it forward. It is Diaz who gets the tackle in. 
And, yeah, if one of those players, Provo, anybody, yeah. if they see that Tellez is that far open, they're going to ping it to him. And that's, you know, one of the things that we saw in the first half is just that lack of man marking. We saw that a lot from Jones. He pinged that ball to Ashford constantly exactly. throughout the first half. And there's Provo. It just skips through the legs of Zangi. Zangi had found a promising space, but a rare loose touch. You can let us know where you're watching from with hashtag up the green, or you can let us know what you think of the pink socks. There's been some controversy on Twitter. Quickly covered by Cameron after Zangi was roaming forward. Well, Matt has relented a bit on his pink sock take. It, it, I understand if the green, as long as the green get three points, we're okay with the pin. Yeah, it, I'm liking this possession and the goals that I've seen for it, so I am coming around to the cherry blossom pink. Cherry blossom pink. Ashford. Bennett holds up play and finds Diaz. The little moments that I've seen Bennett on the ball have actually been impressed, and I would say that's something that they should be trying to get him on the ball. You know, maybe it's him coming in, checking in, getting on the ball for it. But I've liked what I've seen. He's been very clean. He's got a good touch. He's good uh, on the dribble for it. So try to get him more involved. There he is. Right as I say that. Uh, it was a loose touch from him, but I he wins like it back. Jerk. And another poor <laughs> touch. Bennett making his fifth start of the summer in nine games, plays for NYU. A pair of goals for him this summer. Bracy, Connecticut. And everyone drops off of Zengi right there. It's just so weird to me. I, I, I don't understand. At 3-1, I would... There's not it, a lot of press. Not yeah, a lot of pressure. It, there should just be so much more fire to their to their press. Kamal unlocks Threadgold, who's made his way forward. Was able to slide it through the legs of Marshall, but Bazzini, again, not quite on the same page. Cameron intercepts but unable to keep the ball in possession of AC Connecticut. Pacella won the ball back in the midfield. And Tay has a wonderful ball for Ashford. Ashford, a one-time cross. Pazzini flicks it loose on the back post. Kamal gets on it at the end line. He drops it for Threadgold. Threadgold muscles his way, keeps on his feet. Threadgold's pass for Zangi. Zangi takes a lash. It was blocked. Now Probo's got some space. His eyes are up. Provo shot blocked. And now it's loose for Tejas. The Medina green looks swarming. Tired. Yeah, Medina looks tired. He's had to deal with Tejas all night. Well, not all night. It no, was... no, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. I think that must have just crossed the sideline. Or Ashford was offsides, one of the two. No, it was out for a throw. One touch play from Connecticut. It finds Tomas. He's looking for the speed of Bennett. Challenged by Ndia. Those two shoulder to shoulder. That's unfortunate. I, I did like that bit of play right there. That's exactly what I'd like to see out of, out of Bennett. You know, if he starts it by laying the ball off, and then he makes that run going diagonally across. There are just bits where you can see Connecticut where they could be dangerous. Yeah, I mean, and DA and Jones have done a really good job at, the, like, the final to make sure to get the tackle in for it. But it's it's he's getting into those moments where if he just gets a touch and you know Jones or NDA get you know their tackle or, or they read it wrong just a little bit it could turn into a chance on goal Daniel Inferna I agree the jerseys are fire watch them from San Jose Costa Rica that's a great spot to watch from yeah wish I was there right now <laughs> I, I love being here in Burlington yeah. I would not hate being on a Costa Rican beach. We're not the Costa Rica of Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> what is the Costa Rica of Vermont? That is the next question. Yeah. <laughs> Tellez does well. Kamal, a great touch. Thread gold on the run. That's a heavy one. Nibs came out. It's loose. Out for a corner. Thread gold takes it quickly. It's in play for Tellez. 
That was an interesting decision from Thread Cole to put the corner and play that quickly. Well, also, I think Connecticut are contesting that they're, they're like, why was that allowed to be taken that quickly for it? But there's no rules against that. To go back to the jerseys and the socks, not to just focus on the socks, these jerseys are back available online and here in person. The Wildflower Home Kits have been wildly successful. Wildly popular online. I got to get my hands on one. I want the rain jacket. The rain jacket is very nice. Yeah. That's Pizzini. Oof. He's to the end line. Pizzini. Nibs palms it down. There's big Clayton Nibs. He is well put together. Those are tree trunks for legs. Yeah. He is a brick house. Down behind the play, Dwayne Marshall. Mm. Looks like he might have tweaked maybe his ankle. He's struggling a little. This is an AC Connecticut side that did not bring a large travel party to Burlington. They only have three position players available off the bench. And it is going to be the athletic training staff of Vermont Green to come look for him. Nacho LaRach about to enter, and we are about to see the debut, Matt, of the final member of the Hot Take FC podcast, Alexander Levengood. Levengood, good friends with Nathan Messer and Deben Nwegbo. They've got a soccer podcast together. All of them played for William and Mary Tribe. Levengood this year, you see him right there on screen, led William and Mary with six goals and eight assists. He was even more productive than Nwegbo and Messer were. That's a big talent that has come to join the Green Midsummer. Yeah, absolutely. Between him and Bazzini coming in and and uh, and Threadgold, you know that perfect timing, right? That halfway period where you know Messer's out just a little bit. Um, this is this is great having these players come in now and make that real push in the second half of the season. And I'll give a shameless plug to their podcast. Those boys love talking soccer, love talking football. I've tuned in for a couple episodes while I disagree with many of the Chelsea thoughts. Solid, solid podcast. What's the what's the resounding fan base, or what, what have you noticed? Well, they they just talk about everybody. They, they got any devils on there? You would need to ask them. I forget off the top of my head who their allegiances lie in. Ruben Iarna giving some thoughts to Bilal Kamal on the sideline. So those are changes. In the attack, Nacho Larech gives Yaniv Bazzini an exit. Bazzini exits with a pair of assists on the night. And Levengood entering at the number 10 spot for Zangi. Tuning in from Stamford, Connecticut. AC Connecticut might call you a traitor, Paula. But we appreciate your support for the green. And we're about ready to get back underway. For what it's worth, Marshall has remained in the game, so hopefully just a cramp for his sake that he was able to shake off. He's had a lot to deal with. He has. I mean, it's. It, I, I can understand that he's getting a little bit of a uh, little bit of a cramp in the calves. In the first half, it was Diagostini and Thread Golds. Now it is Kamal and Thread Gold that he's had to battle with. It's also having to make those diving tackles. Those are the ones that really stretch you out a little bit. Kamal venturing up the pitch. Too much sauce on the pass from Jones. And there was Nacho LaRage pressuring Marshall. And it's a corner. Marshall didn't necessarily look comfortable there dealing with no, Nacho. No, not at all. Played quickly again by the green. Levin Good goes wide. Probe up into the middle. And Vermont Green strike. Fetty Tejas on his right. Makes it a four-goal night for the green. And for all that good possession that Connecticut had in, in little spells throughout the, the start of this second half, you know, there's just this quality right now in the passing from Vermont Green FC, and they're, and they're taking these chances, these errors that are coming from outside. And it looks like AC's just a little bit tired for it, but great turn, great shot. Keep it low and hidden. Low and driven, sorry. 
Montoya is on his weaker foot as the Green Mountain boys partying. It is the second goal of the season for Tejas, his first since the season opener against Boston Bolts. He had ventured all the way to the far side for that short corner. Who was it that uh, just subbed in for, what was it, Bennett or for AC Connecticut up top? I didn't catch it. Yeah, let me work on that. I believe that is Darius Googie. Okay. That's Sergio Sanchez. Oh, okay. Bennett moved out to the right. Yes, he did. Diaz for Bennett. Marshall goes aerial, and it almost bounced right to the feet of Nacho. It's another, you know, Awkward Aaron pass from, from the goalkeeper. He's struggling with, you know, this wet ball. Levin good on the run. Tejas trying to loft one over the top. Christina's loving the cherry blossom socks. You might be in the minority on this one, Matt. Listen, let me just explain my <laughs> color palette, all right? I like black, white, and tan. <laughs> That's like what my house looks like. That's how I dress. All right, I am boring. <laughs> the Vermont green color palette, certainly not boring. I will admit this green I do love. And you can't argue with the result that the pink socks have brought. Medina. And DA. Oh, <laughs> oh they're going to give the throw to AC Connecticut. It looked like he knocked it off of John. He knows he wanted, so. And it goes out for a corner. That one's certainly off of Ashford. Now it's time for a good, good ball in for this corner for Connecticut. Let's see if they can test Nathan Schnur. So far. He's made one really solid save at the time when Vermont Green were trailing. The goal score, East Dembouli to take the corner. You can see the center backs are jogging very tiredly up, but they're telling the, I think, Amaral to hold off, wait till they get in. A deep ball, well over the head of the center back to Mario Cameron. He keeps it in play. Working against Ashford, and it's a corner. Ashford disagrees. So they get a chance for a redo. Yeah, definitely do better than the, that first attempt. It needs to be needs to be absolutely driven. The looping ball is is good if you have somebody on the back post potentially, like to actually head it back in. That's better. Lefty in swinger. It cleared the head of Jones, and I think ricocheted off of Cameron. And now it's set up for Sergio Sanchez, but he gets it wrong on the one-time touch. Yeah, maybe forget about that one. Yeah, Sanchez looking disappointed. Not his best. He scored three times in the fall for post. Our friend Ryan watching from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm enjoying all these tonight. We've got people from all over the yeah. globe chatting with us. Anybody international so far? Costa Rica. Oh, that's right, Costa Rica. And this time jump from Googie, the second ball one from Istanbul. Skipping through the defense. Joshua Calderon, who's entered the game. Nacho's offside. Well, we've made the Vermont Green Pink Socks a thing on Twitter. It's officially a thing. Hey. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> Man, you got to wear them till you lose. Yeah. I'll wear pink socks. I'll, I'll wear them to the next match. 
I'll wear pink socks if you do. All right. Do you have any? Because I don't have no, any. No, well, I'm trying to see if maybe uh, maybe the ownership group can hook us up. Yeah, maybe. that's true. Blazers and uh, pink socks. Masters green blazer, yeah, pink socks. Yeah, just the top, though. Just blazer tops pink with the, the pink socks all the way up to the knees. I love it. Oh, oh. Pachella. That was an incisive ball. Threadgold's trying to race away from Bear, uh, from Bennett, and he's fouled by Bennett. Pachella just unlocked them there with that pass. Yeah, that was perfectly weighted, too. You can see it's starting to dry up a little bit. The rain hasn't come back, so now he's able to kind of, like, hit it hard just in the first part, and then it slows down just in front. Probo pings it for Ashford. And really, Vermont haven't had to come out of – you know, second gear just to control the match. There hasn't been really any scare so far. You know, this is this is exactly what they would want out of the second half, you know, leading the, the match four to one. They don't want to get into like, you know, a scrap or a battle at this point. They don't want to be looking at, you know, all of their, their physical metrics and being like, I just ran, you know, 14 miles for this match. No, you want it to be able to recover really quickly and get back into training. After a three-game and eight-day stretch, the schedule for Vermont Green cools off just a touch. They go to Seacoast United on Tuesday, though. That is a massive match that is upcoming early in the midweek. Yeah, exactly. My point, you know, it's like thinking about that. You want to be able to recover pretty quick. Thread golds. Now Probo. Levin good. Tejas scores again. Fetty Tejas a brace. That was wonderful. Levin good leaves it for Tejas. A great build up for the green, and they make it a five goal night. I did not think that that was going to make it all the way to Tejas. I thought here, this one, where I thought. Why the pass? Why not take it? And then the layoff, I don't know if it was meant for, but just to curl around the defender, the goalkeeper just couldn't see it. It's a great finish, great curling strike. Pink sock power for the green. <laughs> Fetty Tejas, I mean, that is a great left-footed finish. The initial ball from Thread Gold, advanced by Probo. I'm not sure how much Levin Gold, uh, Levin Good knew about Taya is on his backside, but it was a wonderful dummy regardless. Hey, I mean, you make your own luck, I guess, in, in some ways there. And you're right. It's felt not quite casual, but definitely like Vermont Green are just chilling. They're just enjoying themselves. Right? They're, they're enjoying themselves. Their passing has been really clean. Um, just the, the little plays that they're making. We've seen a couple dummies. We don't know if that last one was a dummy, but that's just – when you see like that one from uh, Bazzini earlier in the first half where he knew where the player was going to be behind him and he let it go because he was going to be offsides, but he knew that they could keep the attack and the shot on goal, that comes from like just a really good, cohesive team working together all the time, really all on the same page. They're in midseason, top of the table form, and that is exactly where Vermont Green are headed. I'll just run through the total table for you all right now. Entering tonight, Seacoast United in first with 19 points through eight matches. Then Vermont Green FC in Western Mass tied for second with 18 points, one back of Seacoast. But Vermont Green and Seacoast a match in hand against Western Massachusetts. So now with tonight's win, Vermont Green, while Seacoast have a match in hand, enter that match on Tuesday, two points up of Seacoast, and could go on the road. If you can earn a point there away from home, you're going to have the division lead after Tuesday's match. Well, remember, we we talked about how do you approach like preseason, and you look at your group, and you identify, all right, these are going to be, this is going to be the hardest matchup, and it's going to be, you know, likely Seacoast is always going to just generally be up there. I don't know necessarily what the scouting was. That's Ooh. a cynical challenge from Marshall. He asks for the yellow and receives it. Really a pessimistic challenge. Yeah, there's a lot of frustration now setting in, getting absolutely worked at 5-1. You can see the players are tired. It was negative in the first half. There was a little bit of positivity in possession. And then looking at this. Here comes the challenge. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's, late. that's just late. And well, Tejas is eyeing this one up. Both Tejas and Zach Zangi braces on the night. 
Contez tests Nibs. He goes for goal, but Nibs able to snag it. Well, Tez wants to match Eneve Bazzini, who had the second ever Vermont Green FC hat trick on Wednesday. Now just three days later, both Zangi, who's now out of the game, and Tez have added crooked numbers on the score sheet. Also of note for Vermont Green, a change in the midfield, Daniel Pacella's night complete. Big Alonzo Clark, the six foot two central midfielder from Davidson, has come on for the green. The boys call him Zoe. And just look at the work rate, even at 5-1. You know, they're absolutely harassing, trying to get the ball back as quick as possible, still sprinting at, you know, I know that we said that they were kind of in second gear, but then they still show this desire and hunger when they see the opportunity to be like, all right, we know that we can force an error here. Everyone turn it up. It's been the performance of the season to this point for Vermont Green FC. Especially here at home, you could make the argument that their six to nothing win over Boston City will look more impressive unless they really add on late. But Boston City yet to take a point all season. They're bottom of the table. This is an AC Connecticut side that were in the thick of things entering tonight. A fifth place crew that have a very favorable schedule. This is a team that only have to play Vermont Green and Seacoast United once each. As it stands on the standings, the top two teams in the division. Probo has all sorts of options. Lorraine tried to chest it forward, but it was Marshall who went through his back. Z Smith tweets, watching from Waterloo, Illinois. Can't say I've ever been to Waterloo, but it's a great state of Illinois you're tuning in from. There's Zoe. Went to high school with Oliver Martin, another of the green players. Kamal gets crashed into, and he goes down. And this is another great A free kick chance. Let's take another look at this tackle here. Well, it's the man from behind. That's Joshua Calderon. Yeah. He chops him down. Doesn't get any of the ball either. And now there's a whole host of Vermont Green standing over it. Alexander Levengood eyeing it up with his right. Tejas thinking about it with his left foot. And DA is coming in. I'm wondering... For a potential cross, potentially? Yeah, potentially. It's it's a little <laughs> close for a cross, but I think Levin Good's licking his chops at this chance. Yeah, this is good shot distance. Alexander Levin Good scoops it over the bar. Not his best effort. Levin Good is another dynamic playmaker in the attacking end that the Green have added to their ranks. And DA goes over the top of <laughs> Googie and actually gets called for the foul. Yeah, he, he bundled right over him. He did win it, though. That's the thing. I guess if you're the referee, you have to decide, did he – Win it because he went over the top, or I think he dominated so much over that that yeah. it felt wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, that can't be allowed, can it? Yeah, it's... it's like playing against your little brother on the basketball court or something. Yeah, it's not my fault. He's little. Not my fault. Although <laughs> that wasn't somebody little that he just jumped over. No, it was not. And there's a late challenge. And that, I feel like, is going to start to become a little bit of a recurring that's theme. Ca that's Calderon again. The same man who took Kamal to the ground now has upended Gabe Threadgold. Calderon, a graduate of Iona, one of the veteran presences on this AK AC Connecticut roster. And Adam Pfeiffer is hot right now. Yeah, and it, because it's the second one, and actually it might be even the third. Yep. That is not the first challenge from Joshua Calderon. He's giving a yellow to and Adam. Adam Pfeiffer has been carded, I believe, for the first time this year. Adam Pfeiffer often stoic, rarely angry. 
But when it comes to protecting his players, he'll let referees know it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it, especially if he sees the same player making repeated fouls, especially late yeah. fouls for it, that's, you know, you're down 5-1. You can tell that's incredibly cynical. So he's going to be furious about it. There's no place for that in a 5-1 to one game, in my opinion. No. Which is exactly why Coach Adam was fired up. Levin good. Working with Kamal. Did he squeeze it up the line? It took a deflection. There's some class from Levin good. He gets it right back. Feeds Alonzo Clark. Clark looking for LaRache. This is well done. LaRache has options in the middle. He gets it on his left, crosses it, and it gets just across the six. Kept in play by Ashford. Chances for both Tejas and Levin good. That ball comes across and takes a deflection off a Connecticut man. Tejas continues the rush. Fede Tejas looking for a back post run over the top of Lorech and too far in front of Levingood. There was a moment there just before Lorech took the touch further towards the end line there where I saw, uh, I believe it was uh, Threadgold, was wide open right at the top of the 18. And if he would have just seen that and cut it across, that would have been a, just a clear shot on goal. The green continue to look dangerous. Deep into the 79th minute. They surrendered first tonight. We were nervous off the top. Thinking that they couldn't drop points at home again, right? Already. I wasn't nervous. <laughs> I'll admit, I was definitely thinking, no way. Already two home losses on the year. A team that just need to take care of business from here on out. And you've made the playoffs for the second straight year. Thread golds. Was weaving his way forward, but eventually ran out of space. Kamal picks it up. Bilal Kamal, a screamer, stabbed aside with the palm. A good, strong save from Nibs. Kamal robbed again. He's got more shots saved this year than I think anyone else on this side. Yeah, he absolutely struck that ball so clean. You saw a knuckle, and you could see the keeper had to just wait just till the end just a little bit to see if it was going to actually start to shift. And taking a look, this is a good view from the here. Levengood does well to somehow find Kamal. On his preferred left foot, and he's just knuckling. Good save from the keeper. Directly into a green keeper. Jones rises up at the back post in traffic. It's out off of Marshall. So Alexander Levengood to take the corner for the green. Taya is providing a short option if he wants. He takes it. They get a two on one out there. Levengood gets a good angle, good cross. The flag went up, but a real chance for LaRage. That's one that, even though it wouldn't have counted, Nacho would want to put away. Yeah, you'd want that one back. <laughs> that close to goal, you've got to get that on frame no matter what. Nacho, give another shout-out to a podcast I've been listening to, the United in Green podcast about this very Vermont Green FC squad. Those boys do a great job breaking down all things Vermont Green. They recently called Nacho LaRache an attack dog, and I love that thought in my mind. He's not your most typical-looking striker, but he will press and press and press and is a bundle of energy. A poor pass from Zoe onto the feet of Bennett. Sanchez back for Bennett. Diaz. Into the space of Googie. Very well worked. Darius Googie, a step on Clark. An outside of the put football across and just nobody making that run. Schnur able to land on it. That was a rare Vermont Green giveaway that resulted in that attack. Now they start to build again. Levin good. A through ball intended for Lorech. It skids its way all the way into the palms of Nibs.
Sanchez brings it down on the ball up in the air from Calderon. Marshall, Calderon. Medina. AC are finding it difficult right now to just break that midfield and get forward. That's a good little flick on right there. Diaz to the feet of Sanchez. The two Spanish internationals. Diaz at the controls with Marshall. This point in the match, it's tough if you're AC Connecticut, right? Tough to just see this thing out. You're down by four on the road in the rain. Yeah, and you can see, you know, they're, they're doing a good job of keeping the ball right now and, and moving it, but they're really struggling to find that, like, final piece of quality just in the attacking third. And it's good positioning. It's good shape from Vermont Green FC that, they're, you know, they're staying within and making sure that they can't actually break through. But, you know, you have to start taking a little bit more of a chance, especially at this time, to try to get maybe a consolation goal. Foul spotted as Tejas crashed into the back of Sanchez. Also in the game, Cole Ewalt off the bench for AC Connecticut, the last of their men to enter. Ewalt plays at Bard College. Here he is on the left wing from Hawaii. Ball across, and there's the finish. AC Connecticut do get one back. And that's much better. That, that's what I you know, was looking for is like, all right, you've had this spell of possession. You've done a good job of keeping the ball for it. And then you see just this little one-two to drive into the box. A fortuitous, uh, I will give that it's a fortuitous little deflection off of NDA. And that's a player unmarked on the back post for there. But, you know, credit to him. Joshua Calderon, the one who gets the finish. The man who had a couple of tackles come in that he threw in on green players that had the green coaching staff up in arms. And now a shot from distance by Sanchez trying to catch Schnur napping. Ashford fouled from behind by Istanbul. Well, it's only the second time all year that the Green have allowed more than one goal. These two teams just play high-scoring matches. Last year when they met, a 6-4 to four win for the Green on the road. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. For whatever reason. Threadgolds, Tejas was eyeing it up. Probo comes flying into the mix as well as Istanbuli. Ashford, classy, back under control. Probo, he's got LaRage. Nacho on his right. A really solid challenge from Cameron in the end. Or that was Marshall. Takes it away from LaRage. Yeah, just last ditch. Got his foot just in there. Well done. Good little flick on there from Probo. And it's a good block in the end from Marshall. Another green corner, Tejas will take. Sharp in swinger to the back posts. It deflects all the way to Levin Good. He takes it to the end line. Levin Good drives it low across. Well done by Nibs to keep it close to him on the rebound. But Probo picks it up. Giorgio Probo chips it just over the bar. <laughs> Giorgio Probo. That was a naughty little try. From my angle, it actually looked like it was going to drop in, too. I didn't think that that, that was actually going over. I love the attempt. The Italian Giorgio Probo, so inventive. Well, he saw the break coming, too, and he didn't decide to kind of try to play it safe and just, like, you know, track back and, and just try to make it predictable. He goes and commits, wins the ball, and then sees that the goalkeeper, who had just ran out to, to roll it forward to start the attack, then he's like, all right, I'm going to try to chip him. Massive Nate Jones wins the header in the midfield. One that goes all the way back out for a goal kick. Ooh. 
A rare mistake from India. Allows Rolled Googie Indian. to work forward. Ashford on the chase. Googie, a heavy touch. Mm. He's frustrated with himself. Yeah. Because I think, honestly, if he would have kept going with that pace, if he just kept it close, he could have committed two players on and maybe hold it up, get a couple more players from Connecticut up, and then next thing you know, you might actually have a uh, shot on goal. Skips on Marshall, but he brings it down with his chest. And evades Levengood. Green still pressing hard into the 89th minute. Probo, loads of space to drive. Probo uses Tejas. Fetty Tejas lays it off. And Larache slides it home. Nacho Larache makes it six and lets loose a vicious scream on the dime from Tejas. Great ball from Probo, right, to, to start the little flick on because it almost looked like he had too many options, you know, and it's like it's too congested and there's like a couple little balls that he could have picked on, a, a couple little passes from it. Just this little flick right here. And it almost looked like it was going to be offsides from my angle. I looked over, saw that he kept the flag down. Fantastic. It is a team best, sixth goal of the year for Nacho Larech. But I'm with you. I was so impressed by Probo's decision-making there. When does he make the wrong decision? It doesn't happen. Not often. And Tejas, unselfish, on a hat trick, lays it off to his teammate, who maybe took away the chance from Bilal Kamal, but Nacho <laughs> pounds it home. And the Green have matched their largest scoring output of the year. Urged to get another one by a young fan in front of us. Kamal would like that. He takes it over. Still Bilal Kamal after evading Marshall. Marshall hustled back into position, but and earns the throw. Nacho does not like having his, his spot taken in the, in the starting lineup, and I love to see that. That's the whole point, is that they should be competing for those starting positions. And you can see him even in the 90th minute. He's just absolutely harassing. He's trying to uh, cause an error and get that one more goal, one more goal. The attack dog, the Argentinian, Nacho Larech, continues to hunt. Googie stretches, but it's behind him. Frustrated because he had a bit of a break on. Alonzo Clark with Jake Ashford as we've played a complete 90 minutes. We're only into stoppage time as Vermont Green FC closing in on their second consecutive home victory. Ready to improve to 7-2 and two on the year. But Sergio Sanchez after a rare giveaway. Sanchez giving room and beats Schnurr. Frustration from Schnurr as Sanchez has his first of the year for AC Connecticut. Such a strange match so far, you know, like really especially odd. in the second half. And that'll be frustrating in Vermont. You know, they absolutely, they understand that they're going to win the match, but they don't want to be giving up three goals when they felt like they had so much control of this match. And they kind of just give Sanchez any space he wants. Yeah, here. you see in DA, like he takes the space. He's expecting the cross, but you have to always go to the ball. Like at least the, the first man closest to it puts the pressure and everyone else starts to take the space and, and mark. I think that's just a little bit, that's a, that's a mental switch that got turned off when you had such a great lead and it felt so comfortable and easy that that complacency that we all we use that term all the time can set in. It will still be a very solid three-point evening for Vermont Green. They will be frustrated after allowing a pair of second-half goals. Probo, just not enough on it to reach Kamal. That ball floated on him. And there's the full-time whistle. Six to three final, Matt. It ends on a bit of a sour note with the goal from Sergio Sanchez. But that man has to be happy. Three points and you end the night in first place in the division. Yeah, I think he'll be happy with the three points to start with. And I think he'll be happy with the overall performance. I think the only thing that he's going to definitely have a little bit of a conversation about is 
you can't just assume because you have such like a large lead and it has been comfortable for so much of the match that your standards can drop just a little bit for it. Now, I'm not saying to harp on any player. By no means is that what I'm saying. I'm just saying that to reach the absolute elite levels and to go into the playoffs and to beat these you know, much stronger teams as likely is going to happen, seeing how this season is playing out, you are probably going to get to the playoffs that your standards can never drop at any point. So, you know, that's the only thing that I think maybe he'll, he'll have a conversation about. It is worth noting that this year only the top two teams in the division make the playoffs. Last year that there was a chance that the top three teams made the playoffs, and they all did. This year it's only two as the USL2 structure slightly changes. So this standing's very tight, very close to follow, and a massive match looms Tuesday against Seacoast United on the road at 6 p.m. Matt, we're not gonna be able to be on the call for that one, but what can we expect from Vermont Green as they go on the road against the team that came into their house and beat them? I think they'll probably, you know, approach it the same way that they've approached what I've seen, you know, from Seacoast to Western Mass, um, uh, to the Bolts, to today. And that has been a large emphasis on playing the ball on the ground, as we've heard, you know, Coach Pfeiffer uh, say that that's his type of brand of football that he likes to play. It's a heavy possession uh, style of play. You can see, like, you know, they love to pivot the ball from left to right and create these chances down the channels and then look to cross the ball across, low across diagonally the uh, the 18. Those are, like, the little characteristics you see out of his system for it. I think they'll probably approach it the exact same way. I, I've never seen them play so far as, like, counterattacking. So, yes, I would say they're going to go to Seacoast with a lot of intensity, but I think they're also going to understand that we can walk away with a, you know, like maybe just a 1-1, one, one, like one point out of that match. That's the type of match where you look at you know, your schedule in the group and you say, okay, this is probably the top two most difficult matches, like this one and maybe uh, Western, uh, Western Mass. So this one you could potentially walk away with just like you know, a draw, and that still keeps you in really good standings. Fede Tejas, a well-deserved man of the match performance in the second half alone, two goals and an assist. Vermont Green FC show their firepower on a night where they take all three points from AC Connecticut. That does it for us tonight from Virtue Field. For Matt Montel and our entire excellent production crew, I'm Brian McLaughlin. We'll talk to you the next home game. That's next Sunday from Virtue Field in Burlington. This has been Vermont Green FC Soccer.